Hey, I'm Elise Bowman. I'm the voice of Pan on Dragon Ball GT, and I'm with Mike McFarlane. Hey, hey. Voice of uh, Master Roshi on Dragon Ball, uh, Jean Kirstein from Attack on Titan, uh, I'm on from Tokyo Ghoul, Buggy from One Piece, Stuff, Things. And I'm my hero. Um, my hero, I am Ojiro and Ectoplasm. And so many other characters. And this is Anime Adventures, the show where I bring you interviews with anime voice actors. So stay tuned, and my interview with Mike is coming right up. convention and it's so exciting so let's talk my hero first okay. and then we have so much to talk about i've All been right. wanting to sit down with you for a long time mm-hmm. mike and i have known each other for a long time now. long time yes so let's talk about my hero and your character okay um i have two characters but the mo- one that is the student is ojiro yes ojiro's uh quirk is that he has this cool tail he does a lot of like melee and uh you know hand-to-hand combat stuff because of that so yeah and then i'm also this teacher named ectoplasm he's mysterious so mysterious are you mysterious i'm very much i am he mysterious. is a bit yes. i know sometimes you'll find mike just sitting in the booth looking mysterious enigmatic <laughs> other long words <laughs> I love it. Now, since we're talking My Hero, one thing that I like to hear from actors, because fans and viewers and people all find that they are connected to My Hero for some reason. Uh-huh. What do you hear from people who come talk to you about My Hero, about the connection that they have to the show? Although the show is about superheroes, superpowers, etc., etc., there's a lot of um, real relationships mm-hmm. and interaction, and that makes it what you can connect to. You know, trying to persevere and do your best, uh, overcome hardships and that sort of thing. And it's just all inspirational. Yeah, I think so. What's your favorite part about being on the show? Um, Being on the show at all. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It took a few years to gain popularity here in the States, but it seems to be pretty popular now to the point where there's an entire convention on just based on just the show. I wish you could see this convention. It's crazy. It is packed. It's at the Urban Convention Center, which yeah. is huge. So yeah, I'd say it's a little popular. I mean, I think you would agree, right? Now, we have to talk Dragon Ball, okay. and I have a story to tell. I told Mike I was going to tell this story. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've told him this and thanked him profusely because he is the reason that I even booked Dragon Ball GT. We did improv, and a lot of your name has come up several times. Okay. Uh, we, I was doing a panel with Josh Martin and Chris Rager, okay. and people ask a lot. I'm sure you get asked this question, like, what is your background? And it seems that a lot of people have improv backgrounds mm-hmm. or theater backgrounds. Yep. You and I were doing improv. Yep. You were doing Section 8. Yep. I was doing Lone Star, <laughs> can't pronounce it, Lone Star Comedy Club. And we were at a dinner. I don't know if you remember some of the details. We were at San Francisco Rose. And there were probably, I don't know, five or six improv people, some from Section 8, some from Lone Star Comedy Club. And these actors, I think we were directing at the time. Probably. There were actors talking about doing anime. And I was like, what? I want to do this. How do I get an audition? I got so excited. You were the one who helped me get an audition yeah. at Funimation. I auditioned for Pan at Dragon Ball GT. I, I was so sick when I went to audition, but I was like, I am going to go to this audition no matter what. And from there, I booked Pan. I could not believe it. And that's really what started my anime career, my voiceover career. And so, yes, over the years, every once in a while, I'll text Mike and go, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So yeah, so that's why I've been wanting to sit down with Mike for so long and do an interview. So thank you again. No worries. So let's talk Dragon Ball. You have so many characters on the show. We do not learn martial arts to pick fights or to impress girls who will say, Oh, Beefcake, you're so strong. I want you. So big ones and some other smaller characters as well. Yeah, um, let's see. Master Oshi is the one of note. Mm-hmm. I'm also Yajirobe. I'm also um, Android 8 or Aider. Um, 
I am also baby. I'm baby from GT. And I think from there, they become smaller and smaller and smaller, or like just one movie or something of that nature. Yeah. But still, so man, you've been doing Dragon Ball a major part of your since, career. Since 1997. Yeah. I won't let you hurt my grandpa! And just how are you going to stop me, you silly little insect? And was that your first show to book as well? Dragon Ball was the first property that I booked, yeah. I, I, first thing that I booked was a movie called Sleeping Princess in the Devil's Castle. Oh, okay. Something of that nature, yeah. Okay, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And then you've done some other amazing shows, and we're going to talk about directing, too, because, of course, he directs. You're, like, Mr. Anime. We need a little crown on you. Oh, no crown, no <laughs> crown. I just try to stay busy. Try. He's very busy. Um, so you've been doing Attack on Titan. Yes, I'm Jean Kirstein in Attack on Titan, and I'm also the uh, ADR voice director. Man, that show gets a lot of buzz as well. But you're on break, right? Until October? Until October, I believe, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Whenever the season starts back up. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> And you're directing something else, but you can't say. Right. Yes, I've, I love that. I've been working on other things. Uh, I recently had a uh, a movie in a couple of hundred theaters across the U.S. that I directed the dub for. Uh, it's called One Piece Stampede. Yes. So um, that's amazing. That was that a nice, was... big, fun project. So let's talk about directing. How do you approach it differently as a director than okay. as an actor? Because the directing part is a lot of work. Well, I have to do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, if I can, I read the manga and the source material. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. And if the uh, source material is also based on something else, like this is based on Greek mythology, I try to brush up on that too. Um, I watch uh, the anime in Japanese. And do you speak Japanese? I do not. Okay. I, I know a couple of terms here and there, uh, but I do not speak it. I would not be able to get around uh, in Japan. Um, uh, I uh, listen to the seiyu, uh, the Japanese voice actors, and kind of like uh, have a mental place of where each character sounds and uh, where they take place in the ensemble or where they fit. Mm -hmm. And um, try to be as informed as possible so that I can make good casting decisions and good directing decisions. Yeah, I had a tiny role. He was my director. I was a reporter. We're reporting live from the explosion site in the southeastern area of Tokyo. Our question is, could this be a repeat of the loss? It's so, it, it makes it sound somewhat simple. That is such a very I try to succinctly long, answer that. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, that is a very long oh, and okay, tedious but creative process, I, I would it imagine. It can be, yeah. Yeah, because I can't imagine, you probably can't even answer this, like the amount of time it takes to prep even before you get to the process of recording. It depends on the show, and it depends on how long it's been out, and it depends on what what it's based on and there's a whole bunch of depends yeah so yeah uh, but you know m minimally numerous hours yes and then minimally. it could go into weeks and days and whatever else so that's yeah. that's crazy it's so interesting to hear about that side of it though yeah and have you were you ever a writer at I've, yes uh, I've adapted yeah. scripts for Funimation I've also adapted for a few other uh, studios around the US Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I yeah. thought you had. I thought I remembered that you were a writer for Funimation. I didn't know you had done for studios around the U.S. Yeah. I, um, other other places that have recorded uh, like um, Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man and uh, Seven Deadly Sins, which is on uh, Netflix. Um, a few other places, a few other shows. Man, your credits and activities are too long to list and talk about. I like to stay busy, and so as long as someone will keep me busy, <laughs> yeah. I will say yes and take the work and stay busy. Well, and you've done on-camera stuff. We yep. share the same age, same talent age. Yeah, we do. Yes, but you've been so busy with Funimation, you probably haven't even had time. I black out a lot. <laughs> I book out a lot. Not black out, like, black oh out. my God, yeah. But we might do it's, that, It's too. called blackout dates. <laughs> That's why, yeah, yeah. Book out when dates. I book out, it's a black out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this has been so much fun. I think we should say goodbye, maybe in a character voice. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, and thank you for being here. We appreciate you. So, thank you very much. We will say bye from Anime Adventures. What character are you going to do? Uh, I'll do Master Roshi. Okay, I'm going to try to imitate your Master Roshi. Okay. Okay, let's see what you got. So long, everybody. So long, everybody. Perfect. <laughs>
Booker. <laughs> High five. <laughs>